The Asian carp, a notorious aquatic invasive fish, has been the focus of an extensive and expensive eradication. I took a trip to Illinois to fish for the two species of Asian carp, the big head carp seen here and the silver carp. These invasive species originate from southern China, but they were imported to America in the early 1970s for their ability to control algae in catfish aquaculture farming in Arkansas. Now, because of flooding, the Asian carp are threatening to upend ecosystems of the Mississippi River Basin, the Great Lakes, and all the way up into Canada. Today, I join commercial fishermen from the Midwest Fish Co-op to gillnet for the elusive Asian carp one of the worst invasive fish of North America. This shallow water, nutrient-rich environment is perfect habitat. We see some Asian carp jumping over our gill netting ahead. But they've moved on. They take up the shovel to do what I can to help out. There, up ahead, our captain sees silver carp alongside the gillnet. It's time for the real work. I'm here to help with the fish animal welfare while carp fishing. How come I always get wet? Currently, commercial fishermen from the Midwest Fish Co-op are harvesting around 100,000 pounds of invasive fish a week from the Peoria Pool. The fish markets in the area have been feeding their communities common carp, grass carp, and the Asian carp, big head and silver carp, for years. This is a family business. Uh, we sell a lot of fish. Asian carp have affected us. They competed with our buffaloes, so I've made a personal mission to go after them. I took it too far, I think. <laughs> In 1987, we got best carp sandwich, but it wasn't Asian carp. They weren't here yet. But people used to eat carp uh, back in the day. We've been here since 1983. My parents started this when I was one. So when we first started, you had a live tank in the back. You'd pick your fish out, clean it for you, take it home. And then after that, they decided they needed to cook fish. They brought, so when they got a walk-in cooler, so they needed to sell other fish all week and cook it on Saturday. And then turn the went Friday, then Thursday, and now it's an all week thing. I used to fish with my dad growing up from probably three on. I'd say when the carp came here, I caught up boatloads and I got checked for it. We didn't have to clean them and I loved it. We were sampling some Asian carp cut different ways, boneless strips, some patties, and cooking up some different samples and testing different cuts of the fish. And we're feeding people. Um, we have hundreds of thousands of pounds, millions of pounds of uh, unwanted protein source, and it's, it's uh, the most aquaculturally consumed fish on planet Earth. We need to take it and we need to feed people. We need to catch a lot of it. 
So when you say sustainability, it's a really bad word with Asian carp, but you're not trying to sustain the Asian carp, you're trying to sustain the rest of the fish by catching the Asian carp. Trying to increase the value and fish flay quality, testing different processing methods and harvest methods for the consumer. You know, if you want to create better value markets and the welfare of these fish, these are the steps you got to take to get there. That's what I like to give everybody for their first approach, you know, to try and carp and feed the media and everything. That product, and you can't not like it. It's just as good as halibut caught out of Alaska. So. We took this guy from California out fishing. My fishing partner was like, from California? <laughs> I said, Dave, this is, this is what you have to do when you go fishing. You gotta do these things. And um, he was nervous at first, but after he came there, he was like, wow. No, it was, it was a lot of fun fishing with you. That was quite interesting. 